Hello, everybody, and welcome to our very special episode today uh, with me, Robbie Fleming, and join me as always for the for when we talk about the Fleming Awards is Cody House. Hello, Cody. Hey, Robbie. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. How have you been? I'm okay. I'm okay. Good, 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 good. Uh, do you want to tell us uh, what we're talking about today? Uh, from my understanding, we are doing the top ten list of the films that won the Fleming Award for the 1950s. 50 through 59, excuse me. Yes, yes. Uh, from what Cody is saying, uh, we're talking about the films that have uh, won the Fleming Awards in our... Uh, 50s era. Uh, these films are, I will t say them to you chronologically, uh, so we don't get messed around. Let me just find the list. But yeah, I've been looking forward to talking to Cody on this, and there were a couple of blind spots because I didn't pick them. It was the members of the group that picked them. And so some of them I do enjoy, and some of them, I think, why on earth did my voters pick this one? And the films are Sunset Boulevard, Alice in Wonderland, Singing in the Rain, From Here to Eternity, On the Waterfront, Rebel Without a Cause, The King and I, Twelve Angry Men, Vertigo, and North by Northwest. These were all the films voted for by the members of the group. And uh, some of these I had to watch to, to see why my fans voted for them. Yes, so uh, let's get cracking on, uh, Cody. What's your bottom of the list? All right. Fair enough, he's had to go off and do something. So I am going to get cracking on with this episode. My number 10 is a movie I did watch after voting and I don't get why my members voted for this one. This is from 1956 and this is the adaptation of Hammersmith and Rogers musical The King and I. Was that your number 10? Yeah, that's my number 10. That's also my number 10. Ah, glad, glad we both uh, think alike. Uh, did you hate this movie as much as I did? I don't hate this movie, but I also haven't seen this movie since I was in high school. It's just not one of my favorite musicals. Yeah. And also, I'm not a big fan of most of Rodgers and Hammerstein's musicals. But, I mean, it's a perfectly fine movie. I'm kind of shocked it won Best Film from the votes. I don't remember what else was eligible, but did seem kind of crazy. But... That's what the people wanted. That's what the people yeah. got. Yeah, does Neil Brenner won my best act? He's the only actor in the same year to win both best actor and best supporting actor. And I do not, and I really want to know what his performance in The Ken Commandments is like because in this movie he is wooden as hell. <laughs> yeah, I don't remember. From what I've seen, I've ne actually never seen The Ten Commandments. I think when they. Only other Yul Brenner movies I've seen is The Magnificent Seven. And yeah, I don't remember him as being like a great actor. He's kind of like more of a certain type. But I think he got cast in the role because of his ethnicity. Makes sense. Makes sense. He's probably played every ethnicity. Well, yeah, because in that era of Hollywood, if you were Jewish or if you were mix or half of anything, you could play whatever race they wanted you to play. Yeah, definitely. 
Definitely. Instead uh, of hiring actors who are actually that race. Literally, literally. Uh, do you want to know who won Best Director uh, this year? Who won Best Director for you in 1956? Alfred Hitchcock for The Man Who Knew Too Much. That's one I've actually never seen, which is actually a remake of a film he did in the 30s with Peter Lorre, but this one has Jimmy Stewart in it. Yes. The King and I also won Best Production Design, Costuming, and Sound. No, yeah, those probably more make sense. Yeah, then Best Actor and Best Film. Ah. Those are the other, other two. So, yeah, it won five altogether. Oh. I still need to see the original Around the World in 80 Days. Have any seen the Jackie Chan one? Oh, I've never seen the Jackie Chan one. The original's fine. That's another one you'll be like, why did that win Best Picture? I'm assuming it's better than The King and I. It might be. It's been a long time since I've seen either one of those movies. Yes, yes. But yeah, that's The King and I. Nope. All right, what's your number nine, then? Is there well, number nine, then? My number nine um, was very controversial, it seemed, in the group that it won Best Picture. Now, I know some people regard this as one of the best of Walt Disney's animated films, but it's not one of my all-time favorites. I still like it, but on this list of films, Alice in Wonderland is going to come in at number nine for me. Right, that's a little bit higher. Ah. It's a little bit higher, so we'll get to that one later. Okay. But my number nine is... Uh is one you had to watch for the first time for this one. And I watched, again, I watched this one after voting. I'm assuming this was probably the best movie at the time. I respect that. But I feel like it doesn't really, it wouldn't really be something I recommend to a modern audience. And it's from here to eternity. Well, that's my number eight. Perfect. Uh yeah, I kind of get that. Like, I can see why it was probably as acclaimed as it was when it came out, because it won a lot of Oscars when it came out. And I didn't check to see if it was based on a book, but it feels like it's based on a book because there's so many different storylines going on in this movie that I feel like we don't really get enough time with any one of the multiple storylines going on in this movie. Yeah, it's uh, based on a book uh, because it won Best Adapted Screenplay. That makes sense because, you know, we got two different love stories going on. We've got the whole Montgomery Cliff drama going on with, like, he doesn't want to box anymore because he blinded a guy. We got the whole, you know, mistreatment of the soldiers with Frank Sinatra and even like some drama with the Ernest Borgnine character. Like there's a lot of multiple plots going on, but we never really get to stay with one story enough to really get to know any of the characters that well. Yeah. Even though Montgomery, Frank Sinatra and Donna Reed all give great performances. Oh, I think Burt Lancaster does too. Um, Burt Lancaster. I can kind of see if, like, for people who didn't like Pearl Harbor, probably accusing of Pearl Harbor ripping this movie off because it's very similar. Yeah, I got that. I got Pearl Harbor vibes off this film. But two films that were nominated for Best Picture that I've seen this year uh, Roman Holiday and Shane which I think are superior films and should have won over from here to eternity. But I wasn't alive in 1953, so. Yeah. I've always wanted to see Tokyo Story. That was the best international win that year, I thought. Oh, that's the Ozu film. That probably should have won too, but in 1953, they weren't nominating international films for Best Picture. Yeah, but I, and I also think that the, that the members of the group uh, tend to watch more American movies. Yeah, even though it has grown more now. Are you talking about your group? 
Yeah, my group. Oh, yeah. Probably, even though I'd say most of them. How many do you think of your members are from the U.S.? It seems, well, I know there's you and uh, Gregory and Justin. And I think uh-huh. from the U.S. as well. That's out the moderator team. Uh, Timothy and Stefan are from Germany, and it's me, Dan. I mean, Martin lives in Northern Ireland, but it's still the UK. If you lived, uh-huh. in, if you lived in the Republic of Ireland, it would it'd be a different country. Gotcha. It's all very confusing. Yes. But from here in eternity, one best film, best director for Fred Zinnemann, best actor for Montgomery Criff, best supporting actor for Sinatra, best supporting actress for Donna Reed, best cast, Best Adapted Screenplay, Best Cinematography, Best Editing, and Best Sound. It is a good-looking movie. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's just almost like you match the Oscars pretty close with this one. Yeah. Do you want to know what one best score? Well, one best score. Peter Pan. Mmm. Peter Pan. That's a good uh, Disney one. Yeah. All right, so I should best go in with my number eight. Yeah, what's your number eight? This might be higher higher on your list, but it's still a work of art from this master, and this is the second film when he won three years in a row. He won between 1958 to 1960, and this is his second of the three of the wins, North by Northwest. Directed yeah, much, much higher on my list. Nice, nice. And we'll talk about that uh, when when it matches up. Uh, what's your number seven? Uh, my number seven is a very iconic movie, and it's a very well done movie for its time, and it has three really great performances. But it's not a movie I like to rewatch that much, but I recognize how powerful it is and how iconic it is, especially for the lead actor and his defining role, even though he didn't get to act in very many films. Uh, and that's uh, Rebel Without a Cause. That's my number six. All right. I've seen this movie twice, and I'll admit it does get better on rewatch start to figure out the plot mm-hmm. a bit more. But the first time you watch it, you kind of think, okay, this is a film of its time. And Absolutely. And you do look at the main character and think he is a whiny, <laughs> whiny loser. I don't know if I'd call him a loser, but I mean, you could say that about a lot of teen films with teen angst that they're being whiny. Yeah. I get you. But yeah, the whole angsty stuff doesn't really, I'm not, it's not as much for me, but I recognize how iconic this movie is. And my dad tells me when he saw the film, he wanted, he wanted to buy a red leather jacket just like that. I bet he did. I bet he did. And this is an original plot, which, um, which I'm Mm -hmm. glad that they had a original movie is that, that would go on to win awards. Yeah, and I don't... I think... I don't know if Blackboard Jungle came out before this, but it's one of the first times where you're, like, portraying, like, teenage life in a serious matter and, like, the things that affect teenagers. Like, how serious that can be for them. Definitely. Like, how... Like, how dramatic and tumultuous, like, being that age can be. Yes. Definitely. I've not I've not heard of Nicholas Ray do anything else, but from what he's done, he's a pretty good director. Oh, um he's directed quite a few films. This is probably his most famous, but he's got a quite a few films that are highly regarded. Right. But Rebel War of course, one best film, best director, best actor, best supporting actor for Sal Maroney. Uh, the best actor one was Sir James Dean, by the way. Best of course. Best was Natalie Wood. Best cast for uh, best original screenplay. Best cinematography. Best editing. 
and best production design. And I must say, the production design is quality. Also, that's gorgeous Technicolor for that film. I know. I know. That's and, what I've got the editing with. And, uh, you know, talking about the drama of this film, and sadly, all three of those actors died tragically. Car crash, drowning, and knife attack. Mm-hmm. Although I think Natalie was quite older when she died. Yeah, it's still tragic, though. Oh, yeah. They never really got to shine. Well, you, you know, James Dino was only in three movies, so... Yes. Is East David in his other movie from that year? Yes, and that's also a very good film. Uh, so that one best score and best adapted screenplay. Yes. Nice. Yeah, he was in three very good movies. Yeah, I've heard about Giant. Yeah. Looks pretty interesting. It's it's quite long, but very good. So, I can't remember if everyone... I don't think anyone's doing a Texas accent, even though it's about Texas oil and cattle, but... Yeah. yeah. And it's got a very young Dennis Hopper in it. Nice. Love me some Dennis Hopper. You ready for my number seven? Yeah, what's your number seven? My number seven is the inaugural winner of the 1950 Fleming Awards. This is the first one we then introduce as the inaugural one. And I, I knew this film was so into win, although I do prefer a little small Japanese movie called Rashomon. This movie is definitely one that changed cinema, and it's uh, Billy Wilder's Sunset Boulevard. Oh, this is absolutely much higher on my list. Nice. Um, so, if that's the case, uh, just tell me your number six. Uh, my number six is the, one of the go-to movies for method actors that have been Wanting to get into acting that they go to is an example of one of the best acted films. It comes from a, a lot of the guys that came from the actor's studio and the Streisberg, Lee Streisberg is their instructor. Uh, of course, it won a lot of Academy Awards, including Best Actor for Marlon Brando, Best Picture, Best Director for Ilya Kazan. I can't remember if Eva Marie Saint won, but I think Carl Malden might have won. And it's uh, On the Waterfront. Which is a lot higher on my list. Ah. So I am just going to uh, say my number five, which is your number nine, and that's Alice in Wonderland. Ah. And I don't get the controversy with the group. The group seemed to have wanted a streetcar named Desire to win. I do want to watch it because I liked On the Waterfront and... But Alice in Wonderland is a very good animated movie. There's some good. It is. And some fantastic animation. It is. It's not my favorite from that era, and you know Alice is kind of annoying. But you know, so is Dorothy from The Wizard of Oz. But you know, it's the other characters that make it interesting. You could say the same with Harry Potter. I don't find Harry Potter annoying. Fair enough. But no one in is all the other characters are interesting around Harry. Oh, well, yeah, for sure, because you got some colorful characters. Plus, they got, like, the best actors in the world to play most of those characters. Oh, definitely, definitely. But, yeah, I'm just glad that the Fleming Wards did something different and let an early animated film win best film. Yeah, that is interesting, um, but you, I can understand why people would have wanted a streetcar named Desire because it's a classic film, and it's, again, Kazan and Brando taking their stage, doing the stage version and taking it to the big screen. Yeah, Kazan won Best Director and, and Brando won Best Actor. Yeah. 
But yeah, I do like Alice in Wonderland, and it won best film, only five. Best score, best editing, best sound. Yeah, just four. Just four. Mm. Sound, editing, score, and film. Yeah, because they have like loads of writers, so and it doesn't really mm -hmm. seem like a film with more than three writers is worthy of having an adapted screenplay win. Mm -hmm. But yeah, Streetcar Named Desire won. Mm. Adapted screenplay. I'm not Makes seeing sense. an American in Paris, but it looks like a blast. I mean, it at least should look good and have some good dancing. I've never seen that one either, but it's Gene Kelly, and I think that's what won Best Picture at the Academy Awards that year. Now, maybe that's why people are obsessed to Streetcar Never Wins anything. Well, that just shows you how famous the Academy has made so many mistakes over the years. Yeah, but... Exactly. But how are you going to know, like, what films are going to be culturally, uh, are going to have a lasting impact or culturally important decades from when they are released? You know, you don't always know that. True. And it's politics, too, so. Oh, definitely. It's all about politics. Like this, like the Fleming Awards is about fun. Yeah. Yeah. You ready for Yuri Tamio number five? Yeah, uh, so it's number five for me, but since you have not listed this film yet, that makes me happy that it's much higher on your list. But for my money, this might be the greatest movie musical of all time. It's just a lot of fun. And you can even see its influence on a film like The Artist, and that's uh, Gene Kelly and Stanley Doan's Singing in the Rain. A lot higher on my list. Well, good for you. Yes, and I've not seen uh, my number four on your list yet. Oh, yeah. And my number four has to be ha has to be like the most the most acclaimed movie of these, and not just the most acclaimed, but probably the one that looks the most modern. Like, this movie has not aged a single bit. It's a really fun story. The first of of a trio of wins for Mr. Alfred Hitchcock, starring Jimmy Stewart, this is Vertigo. It is also my number four. I don't know if I would say this movie's fun, but it looks great. It's got a great score. It's one of his most... Um, Iconic films, but yeah, it's a masterpiece. It is a masterpiece. It is a masterpiece. I love and it's this film. it's referenced and ripped off so many times. Yes, and not recently, but the the sight and sound list that came out in 2012, Vertigo dethroned Citizen Kane as the greatest film of all time. Wow. And now I forget the title of the one that made the list, this last one, but it's like a French film that's three hours long about a widowed housewife. Yeah, I want to see that. Yeah, it caused a lot of controversy. But um, yeah, Vertigo is also my number four. Yes, and it, it won Best Film, Best Director, Best Born Actor for Barbara Bal Geddes. Remind me which one she was again. Oh my God, it's been so long since I've seen Vertigo. Because yes, Kim well, Novak's the lead. Yeah, she was nominated for Best Actress, but lost to Elizabeth Taylor for Cat on the Hot Tin Roof. Mm, well, I mean, that's a performance. Uh, yeah, I can't remember. I'm sorry. Apologies to anyone. I'm sure someone's screaming at us because they know this by heart, but yes, I've only seen Vertigo once. I've seen it three or four times now. Nice. 
Best adapt. They also won best adapted screenplay, best cinematography, best score, best editing, and best sound. The Defiant Ones won best original screenplay. Oh, is that for nineteen fifty eight as well? Yeah. Oh, that's a great movie too. I like that movie. And do you all know what won best international film? Do you like this one? Is it a Kurosawa? It is. It's a Hidden Fortress. Yeah. I mean, that's a pretty epic movie. And it's uh, pretty much the influence for Star Wars. Nice. It's not one of my all-time favorite Kurosawa films, but it's pretty fun. Yeah. I read you. All right, I'll let you go first with your number three. Oh, well, my number three may not be your favorite in this genre. I don't even know if it's the first of this in his genre, but it's considered the all-time movie and example for this genre. And it t tells you you can adapt stage plays and make them riveting in cinema, even if it's in one location. And that's uh, Sidney Lumet's directorial debut, 12 Angry Men. Just a tad higher. Because my number three is on the waterfront, so we can talk about that. All right. So, yeah. Uh, I I thought Seven Samurai would be the more popular choice, but uh, when I was recommended by members of the group on the waterfront, I watched it and I loved it. Yeah, it's a great movie. Did you think Seven Samurai would win just because of like how much it's referenced in Western films? Uh, that and because of its popularity. Well, that's part of its popularity is how many times it's been remade or homaged or ripped off. Like, it's one of the most homaged films in cinema. Yes, and also this kind of reminds me of The Irishman because it's about the union. Uh-huh, I can, I can kind of see those connections there. And also I like a good boxing movie, and this is boxing in. Yep, it's also got boxing in it because he could have been a contender. He could have been. And Leonard Bernstein does the music and he does a grand job. Yeah, I wonder if we'll get a scene about this in uh, Maestro. That's what I'm hoping. Which because... I've heard nothing, nothing but good things about that movie. Oh, good. Marlon Brando, Carl Mulder, Lee J. Cobb, Rod Steiger, and Eva Marie Saint. What a cast. Yeah. Ton of heavyweights. Yes. Fantastic story and a great great directing from Elias Kazan, but he lost best director to Akira Kurosawa for Seven Samurai. Well, there's only one master, Kazan, and he didn't sell people out and tell the U.S. government they were communist. But uh, <laughs> but I think he won the Oscar that year. I'm sure he did. But, uh, but on the waterfront one, best film, yep. best actor, best supporting actor for Lee J. Cobb, best supporting actress for Eva St. Marie, best cast, best original screenplay, Best cinematography, best score, best editing, and that's it. That's a lot. Yes, yeah, seven times by one. Directing, design, costuming, and sound, and best international film. Mm -hmm. So pretty damn good. Those, those two movies. Yeah. But my number two is 12 Angry Men. Yeah. All-timer, man. I love this movie. I loved it from the second I saw it. Oh, it's a masterpiece. You got uh, Henry Fonda in one of his iconic roles. You got, uh, I think it's Jay Lee Cobb again. Yeah, Jay Lee Cobb. Yeah. 
and uh, Jack Warden. Yeah, it's just yeah, it's a great movie. And it because you know there is a lot of criticism that when you watch a movie that's based on a play, that you can tell it was a play. But I think Lumet does a great job of making this feel cinematic, even though it's just twelve men in a room. You could say the same about a whale and the whale, and that's really well done. It is well done, but it's not on the level of twelve angry men. Yeah. And uh Martin Balsam's in this, he's the foreman. Yeah. It's, it's, weird. It's, it's weird so I didn't realize until I did the 60s Fleming Ward that he was the same guy who played the detective in Psycho. Yep. Yep, that's the same actor. I don't know why. I can picture picture if they did a modern version of this. Uh, John C. Riley would play the the one who's bothered about more bothered about the baseball game. He'd play the Jack Horton role. <laughs> yeah. Uh, they did a 90s version. I think William Freakin directed it. I can't remember who played the Henry Fonda role, but I think it had Jack Lemmon and George C. Scott in it. It might have been one of the last things Jack Lemmon did. Oh, well, Jack Lemmon plays Henry Fonda role. Oh, well, that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, George C. Scott playing Lee Cobb makes 100%. <laughs> Ha! That's the second time he's played a part that was originally Jay Lee Cobbs. Because that... he took because he took over the part in the Exorcist three, the the part that Jay Lee Cobb played in the Exorcist. Nice, but uh, but in the nineteen fifty seven Fleming Awards, Twelve Angry Men won Best Film, Best Director, Best Actor for Henry Fonda, Best Supporting Actor for Lee J Cobb. Best cast, best Look at best him. screenplay, and yeah, that's it. And most of the wins were either that, uh, Bridge on the River Kwai, or The Seventh Seal. Which Bridge on the River Kwai is what what won the Academy Award that year? Makes sense. It's David Lean. Yeah, and he makes good looking movies. But I have only seen that in Lawrence of Arabia, so my David Lean. I have too many David Lean blind spots. You need to see Dr. Shivago. Yeah, I guess that's the the other classic one of his. All right, Cody, we got three movies left to talk about. They've all been mentioned. We got three. I only have two left. And I've got one. Oh, okay. You've only got one. Well, I know what your number one is. So I guess you want to know what my number two is, so you'll know what my number one is. Yes. Okay. Well, my number two might be this director's most entertaining film. I love it. It's got a great score. It's got a great cast. It's got a great villain. And it's a big influence on the James Bond franchise, and that's Alfred Hitchcock's North by Northwest. Nice. Nice. It's been a while since I've seen this, but I do remember the ending being really action packed. Yeah, there's a whole climax on Mount Rushmore. Which I've seen parodied to death. Well, yeah, Family Guy parodied it, parodied it, and I forget. It's Yeah, it's been parodied a bunch because it's one of the most iconic films in film history. So much so that they wanted Cary Grant to be James Bond. That could have worked. Yeah, I don't know how old he was in night in the sixties, so he might have been older than what they wanted. But yeah, that was one of their original actors they thought of. And I like the and I like the start with Hitchcock when he gets his face slammed by the bus door. Yeah. And I mean, even Martin Landau is great as James Mason's henchman, who I don't think talks or hardly talks in the movie. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's just a fantastic movie. It's a load of fun. Yes. 
Uh, how's the Lee Fleming Awards out the bunch? What did it win besides Best Picture? Best Director and Best Original Screenplay. Mm. Ben Hur won the most. Which that's what won the Oscars that year. And it's, I think, tied with Titanic and Return of the King for the most wins a movie's ever received. Definitely. It, they do all deserve that, but this is the Flemings, and they clearly prefer a nice two-hour mer- two-hour mystery movie compared. To well, if four hour if long. you told if you told me which movie would I want to watch right now, North by Northwest or Ben Hur, I'd pick North by Northwest every time. Yeah. Nothing against Ben Hur. I just I don't I don't love it. It's not one of my favorites. It's not as good as Gladiator. No. No, it's not. I'd say it's slightly better than Spartacus. Oh, really? Because that's yeah. the only Kubrick I haven't seen is Spartacus. That is a, that is a good choice. Yeah, but yeah, check, check that one out, as Spartacus. Okay. I mean, yeah, I know I should. Yes. So what movie do you want to talk about first? Sunset Boulevard or Singing in the Rain? It's cool that we that both are number ones. Or about Hollywood? Or about Hollywood. Yep. And both are kind of a tongue-in-cheek take on Hollywood. Like, they're kind of taking a piss out of Hollywood. Yes. I just prefer the light-hearted way to it. And I prefer the deeply dark twisted film noir with an absolutely amazing performance by silent screen actor Gloria Swanson. It's just it's just such a good movie. So many good lines. Yes. Yes. Well, and I love that the poker scene where she's playing poker has got other silent movie stars, including Buster Keaton. Yes. What do you think to Bill Holden? Because he's one of my favorite actors. Uh... Oh, man. This has got to be one of his best roles. And Now, I have yet to see the other film they did together. Uh, well, actually, I think they did three films together. So I haven't seen Stalag 17, which is the other more popular film, which I guess is The Great Escape before The Great Escape, but also kind of the influence on the TV show Hogan's Hero. And I haven't seen the film... Uh, I think he's in Fedora is the name of that. That's one of Billy Wilder's later films. Okay. But yeah, he's great in this movie. I, I love him. He's kind of a POS and he's kind of trying to use this lady because he needs money and he's got to avoid the creditors. But, uh, but you also sympathize with him, too, at the same time, even though he's kind of using this crazy lady. Uh, I love uh, that we've got a film director in this playing a role. He was, like, a big influence on William Wilder. I mean, on Billy Wilder. It's weird. His name's Samuel, not William. Yeah. Yeah, his real name's Samuel Wilder, not William Wilder. Yeah. And then uh, you also get uh, the guy that went on to be Joe Friday and Dragnet in here. So nice, playing the boyfriend to the girl that ends up liking William Holden. Sweet. Uh, this is the only film of the Fleming Awards history to win both Best Actor and Best Actress. It, really, the only one. Well, I mean, they're great no, performances. No, no, not the only one. The not the only one. The only one out of these, I forgot. These that. ten films. Yeah, this happened a few. No, uh, no streetcar named Desire, but that one free. So Desire. So Vivian yeah. Lee won, and Marlon Brando. And Marlon Brando. Yeah, those are the only two from this decade that have won. 
that one. I best think. best leads. This is all given to Anderson so Lamb's both best actor and best actor. And same with one player of the Cuckoo's Nest as well. Oh, that one matched. That's the Oscars did that too. Yeah. The Sunset Boulevard uh, won. won Best Film, Best Director, Best Actor for William Holden, Best Actress for Gloria Swanson, Best Original Screenplay, Best Cinematography, Best Gore, and Best Production Design. Nice. All worthy. But, yes, and now we're going to talk about Singing in the Rain, my favorite movie from the 50s. Yeah, it's a very infectious, charming movie with great dance sequences. I think Donald o O'Connor gives one of the best performances of all time. Mm. Just I mean, didn't see any trying to cheer up the Gene Kelly while doing that dance. It just cool how he didn't he he didn't have a stunt double. That's just all him. Do you think that one dance sequence with the make him laugh was an influence on Christopher Nolan for Inception? Maybe. Maybe, but he said in an interview recently he, he's not a big fan of musicals. That does not surprise me. Yes, yeah, so Gene Kelly, Debbie Reynolds, Don, Donald O'Connor, fantastic. The production... The costuming are just amazing. I love the story of the whole transition to to the uh, and the best thing about this movie I find is how they make it again like Vertigo, how it still holds up because it feels like a film that would be made today. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, they even reference this movie in Babylon with song numbers and even some of the jokes exactly yeah that's you know that's how important this movie is and that's why i say it's probably the greatest movie musical of all time because it's also about the movies and it's like showing what you can do on because a lot of people complain about like musicals don't transition well from the stage to the screen, but this is like showing you what you can do on the screen with a musical if you have the budget and you have the talent. Yes, and it's funny how the singing in the rain bit is just a scene in the in the middle of the movie that has nothing to do with the movie, and I just think that's cool. <laughs> Nope, there's just a random musical number that has become one of the most... I mean, there's there's at least three songs in this movie, I think, that are iconic. And, of course, that's one of them. Yes, I love this. I love the good morning sequence. It's funny, it's the, yep. first, the first time I watched this movie, my ex-partner put it on, and I just fell in love with that good morning scene. Yeah, it's it's infectious and charming. Yes, I literally was watching some of it uh, before we before we recorded, so it was fresh in my in my mind. Oh, awesome! And it's weird for me to back before I, that before twenty sixteen, I didn't like musicals, and it's weird to say that uh, that one of my favorite movies from the fifties, one of my favorite movies of all time, is a musical. So what is the musical that won you over? La La Land. Ah. Which, I love that movie as well. I know a lot of people, though, that are musical people don't like that movie. I know. Because... I know. It's weird. Well, I think it's because they don't like Ryan Gosling and Emma Stone singing because it's not that great. But Ryan Gosling's better singing in Barbie. Yeah, because he's playing a character and it's silly. Yeah. You know. So it's character singing instead of... Uh, but I think that was on purpose for La La Land. And, um, yeah. 
I'm a La La Land defender. I so, still think it's a great movie. Um, yes, and uh, at the 1952 Flemings, Singing in the Rain one, best film, best actress for Demi Reynolds, best sport and actor for Donald O'Connor, best cast, best cinematography, best editing, best production design, best costuming, and best sound. Yeah, those are all great choices. Kurosawa won his first for Ikari. And also oh, won, such a beautiful film. And also won Best Original Screenplay and Best International Film. Nice. So this is his first Best Director win? Okay. Oh, yeah, because yeah, Billy Wilder won for Sunset Boulevard. And he did win Best Editing for Rashomon. Ah, what? I mean, talk about another movie that's whole style has been repeated. Definitely. Definitely. I mean, that's why it's called the Rashomon effect. So anytime another movie does it, like it's named after Rashomon. Yes. Uh, go and see The Last Jewel, everyone, if you haven't. Yes, but, you know, fair warning, there is a scene you see graphically intensely twice, twice so... You know, if you but, want a more family friendly version, watch Hoodwink. <laughs> Does Hoodwink do the uh Rashomon thing too? I've never seen it. Yes, it does. My friends from Plymouth showed it me. Okay, yeah. Are you ready to, to read out the list? So we were all a bit jumbled today, so I think we should read them out. Uh, we sure. Same number 10, and that was The King and I. What was your number nine? My number nine was Alice in Wonderland. And my number nine was From Here to Eternity. Which was my number eight. My number eight was North by Northwest. Uh, my number seven was Rebel Without a Cause. My number seven was Sunset Boulevard, but my number six was Rebel Without a Cause. Um, my number six was On the Waterfront. My number five was Alice in Wonderland. My number five was Singing in the Rain. My number four was Vertigo. Which was also my number four. My number three was On the Waterfront. Uh, my number three was Twelve Angry Men. Which is my number two. My number two was North by Northwest. And my number one is Singing in the Rain. Uh, my number one was Sunset Boulevard. Wow. Good. Uh, what would you say are, are similar between these 10 movies? Because I always try and find like a similar pattern uh, when, when I look at an era of like best film winners. Well, we certainly have got two films that are about Hollywood. We've got a lot of films in gorgeous Technicolor because this is the 50s and Hollywood's trying to compete with television because they're worried people are going to stay at home now that most homes have television. Uh, that's another reoccurring theme. But we're seeing you got also a lot of serious drama with On the Waterfront and Rebel Without a Cause. Uh, but we got a couple of black and white winners here, too, with Sunset and 12 Angry Men and On the Waterfront. So, yeah, a few of these films have some connections. And, of course, we got two Hitchcock winners. Two Hitchcock winners, both in color. Mm -hmm. It's funny how he later goes on to win for a black and white movie. Like well, I, I think that was part of the deal to not get a a different rating too due to the subject nature of that film. No that at the that, time. that makes sense. That makes plus sense. plus he'd done a ton of black and white movies because he'd been directing since the twenties. Yes he has. He has. And yeah films like The King and I and From Here Here to Eternity like they're films that that won't really like. I I appreciate them, but they're not ones I would go back to. Whereas, I would like to rewatch North by Northwest and Sunset Boulevard. I've only seen those once. Definitely would love to watch on the walk front again. 
Yeah, yeah, I don't think any of these are. Angry men and singing in the rain. I can just watch on repeat. I don't think any of these are bad movies at all. But I would say at least six or seven of these movies are like all timers. Yes, for sure. Like they're all great movies. Yes, and uh, yeah, and all, and there are other. 50s movies that are great that we have been talking about and I'm glad that films like Seven Samurai and Karu and Rashomon get attention and other Disney films like Cinderella and Peter Pan mm -hmm. and it looks like Japanese the, the Japanese pretty much conquer the best international film group well, you know, they are one of the more prominent markets for international films, especially, I don't know about in the UK, but especially for the US, they tend to be one of the bigger ones that get crossover to over here for whatever reason. And that might be partly due to Kurosawa because a lot of American films have been heavily influenced by him. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Which is funny because he was trying to westernize uh, Japanese films because he was influenced by American films. Yeah, they all share a bit of influence from each other, the Japanese and the Americans. Yeah. I can imagine... I can imagine... Uh, Miyazaki is probably watched a few classic Disney films for inspiration. Maybe so. Maybe so. I forget, like, kind of what Miyazaki likes because he's not very happy with the state of animation in this day and age. I thought he'd be buddies with Del Toro. Oh, he probably would be buddies with Del Toro. But I think he's thinking of mostly the mainstream Western animation. Definitely. But if Miyazaki knew about the Fleming Awards, he would be happy with the Alice in Wonderland win. He might. He might. Or he doesn't care. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. Right. Anyway, I'm going to have to uh, end the show now. But yeah. thank you, Cody, for coming on board. Uh, let us know. And, uh, I've listed the movies down below in the comments. So comment down how you would rank these movies or let us know what's your favourite movie from this list. Like and subscribe. I'll have to do the 70s and 80s list with you in the new year. So I have fun doing these with you and I want to get Justin on. I might get both, I might get all three of us for the 90s one. I think that'll be okay. between the three of us. 70s and 80s. Uh, I got to go back and see if there's anything I need to see from those. Yes, do you want me to send you the link to the website once we're done? Yeah, sure. So I know what I need to watch. Sweet. Um, yeah, have you and Justin done all the, the 10s and the 2000s? Yeah, we've done the 2000s and the 2010s. Okay. I was going to say, because we did the 60s. Yeah, so, did the 60s. All right. Yeah. Yeah, thank you for doing this uh, with me. I, I was planning to do this earlier on, but I got so caught up with the, with the horror stuff in October. No, it's understandable. And, yeah, I'm just, uh, yeah, anytime you want to do something, uh, give me a possible day because that'll make me go ahead and watch the movie faster if I need to watch something instead of like, oh, okay, I still need to watch this. So, but yeah, it's fine. Brilliant. No, we've, when we do the Fleming Awards stuff, I'll keep you updated on what films are getting nominated and what films are in potential so you have time to try and catch up with, with them. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah. Sweet. Sweet. Right. Sorry to ramble on. Right. Bye, everyone. <laughs> Bye. Right. Thank you, Cody. Thank you, everyone, for watching. Oh, Take thank care. you. It's always a pleasure. Bye-bye, everyone. Same. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye.